Hi there, I'm Dre, the host and founder of The Dragon Network, an online member-based community where health IT professionals can share their experiences, discuss ideas, and collaborate with one another on all things related to health IT. On this week's video, I'd like to continue the conversation around the HIMSS maturity models, and I want to focus on the OMRAM, or the Outpatient Electronic Medical Record Adoption Model. Similar to the MRAM, which we talked about in a previous video, this is also an eight-stage maturity model that ranges from stage zero through stage seven. Only instead of focusing on acute care campuses or hospital-based environments, this particular model focuses on outpatient clinics, such as ambulatory care or primary care clinics. So before I dive into each of the seven stages, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel yet, please go ahead and do that now. And as always throughout the video, if you like what you're seeing, don't forget to hit that like button. Facilities that are at stage zero of the OMRAM model are almost entirely paper-based with respect to their charting. They also have very little, if any, clinical data or reference material that's available to them online. So they tend to rely quite heavily on looking things up in reference books or in interacting with colleagues through things like phone calls and fax. Once outpatient facilities go into a stage one, we do start to see some electronic interactions, and this is primarily for eligibility checking for their patients, as well as access to some of that clinical reference material. The other thing that's needed to achieve stage one is some access to result data from external facilities. So if patients in the clinic are going for labs, for example, the ability to look up the results of those lab tests online in some capacity. For a lot of outpatient clinics that are at this early stage, that is typically through a hospital-based portal that's been extended to them or from an HIE. Stage two is where you start to see an electronic medical record or a clinical data repository come in. And with this, the results that are coming in would be viewable in a single system, even if those results are coming from multiple places. With stage two, you also start to see some documentation and a few orders being entered into the system. Clinics that are working through the OMRAM maturity model may also choose to put computers at the bedside in this stage, although that is not a requirement until later on. Stage three is where use of that EMR really starts to become more robust. Providers will start to do the vast majority of their charting in the system, so that's for nurses as well as providers. You are required to have computers that are closer to the point of care so that you can document history, care plans, vital signs, and things like that. And stage three also requires that you have electronic entry for prescriptions. Some clinical decision support will also be in place, and that's because we're starting to see a lot more information being entered into that single system, and an electronic messaging system that allows clinicians to communicate with one another within that clinic setting is also something that's needed to achieve stage three. Stage four continues to build on the use of the EMR, and we start to see more robust CPOE, so almost everything is gonna be entered at this stage, and the clinical decision support is going to be increased so that you can see the benefits of those alerts and dashboards and things like that actually help you throughout the clinic day. So the labs we talked about coming in from external sources will start to come in with discrete data elements. So they will no longer just be coming in as a scanned PDF, for example, they're gonna come in as elements that can be incorporated into the record and there'll be internal and external sharing of data. So that connection, for example, to the HIE is something that will start to be bilateral. Outpatient facilities in this stage will also start contributing data to external registries, such as immunization registries or particular disease-specific registries that may be relevant to their patient population. In order to achieve stage five of the OMRAM model, you would have a patient portal put in place with evidence that the patients are actually engaging with the clinic and engaging with that digital technology. So clinics will start to promote and start to interact with their patient populations in a more digital way and start to share information and have that two-way conversation. So when encouraging the patients to go to the portal, it's important to have things in there that can be beneficial to them. So the other portion of achieving this stage is to make sure that you have their allergies, their demographic information that they can review, patient education materials, and some information about the clinic visits that they have, such as summary notes. To achieve stage five, the patient portal also has to have some form of scheduling ability for the patients, either to request an appointment be made 
or the ability to directly schedule an appointment on their own by looking at what's available. So stage six really builds on everything that we're putting in that EMR with the previous stages, including the information that is flowing back and forth to the patients, and it starts to layer a lot more advanced clinical decision support. It is focused on proactive care management, so trying to encourage patient wellness as opposed to just sick care. So those educational materials that you've got in the portal, the interactions with the communication tools, things like that are gonna be very important to achieve a stage six. Clinical decision support put in place to achieve this stage will include things like preventive care reminders, as well as status on particular pathways. Patients will be able to put information to indicate how things are going. The patient portal engagement efforts that were started in stage five will be continued in stage six. In order to achieve this stage, the clinic needs to demonstrate that there is actually benefit to the patient with their digital interactions and with the things that are put in place. Finally, to achieve stage six, the clinic messaging needs to be structured in nature and there also needs to be some connections to bedside devices. Stage seven is the final stage in this OMRAM model. It is where everything has been transformed into a digital environment. You are leveraging the electronic systems to improve patient care, both at the individual level, as well as for the population level for that particular outpatient facility. All medical devices that are utilized in the provision of care are connected and have discrete data flowing in so that clinical decision support can trigger off of that data to assist providers with anything that may help them improve the care that they're delivering. And the organization is connected to multiple HIEs, both in a contributory manner as well as in a receiving manner. Last but certainly not least to achieve stage seven, you need to have a disaster recovery plan in place. You need to have business continuity procedures and there needs to be some form of IT governance and change control process that the clinic can follow should things need to be updated, adjusted, or altered. This progressive maturity model is something that a number of organizations are working towards around the world. We do currently see more stage six and more seven practices and facilities in the United States than we do in other countries, but slowly over time, there are more that are being added in. I'm gonna put a link to the HIMSS information below so that you can read more about each of the stages and also check to see how everyone is doing in your area. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you again soon.